Emerson College, my college. I'm a senior today, but in five weeks I'll be a graduate of this school. I feel like I haven't learned anything. In this documentary, I hope to tell you that there are several problems with this school, problems that could be easily fixed, but it all comes from the systemic idea that, in the end, Emerson can help you out to get a job in the future, or that we're this big connection in the industry, and it's just not true. I'm Jim Cummings. Enjoy the program. I was a tour guide at Emerson for about three months this summer, and uh, I constantly felt like I was lying to parents and lying to prospective students. So the one thing that I wanted to do with this documentary is to kind of give you more information that I couldn't give you on tour, that I wanted to, but uh, I wasn't allowed to by the administration. Here's an example of something that Emerson has done that a lot of the film students disagree with. Um, last year, the Visual Media Arts Department had something like $10,000, this yearly allotment for newer equipment for the Equipment Distribution Center. And instead of spending the money on uh, newer cameras like uh, HD cameras or even old 16 millimeter cameras, instead of doing any of that, we bought 10 new Bolex cameras, uh, bringing our number of Bolexes uh, from 50 to 60. This kind of antiquated camera that uh, you'd see in a film one or a, or a high school film program and uh, I just don't understand these choices and everybody that I tell this story to everybody that hears about this uh, they go oh classic Emerson somebody should go up to them and say why did you make this decision but why, why doesn't anybody go up to him and say hey like this is a problem like why don't we have better cameras these other schools have better cameras they have a better system of taking out their equipment and they can do it without a hassle I don't understand it Emerson does have a limited, limited availability of space, but I don't think the space we have is utilized properly. And oh. case in point, the Will and Grace set. Now, it has nothing to do with filmmaking, but sometimes when I want to go to the library and I want to sit down and maybe I'm writing a script or maybe I'm writing a paper for my writing class, it doesn't matter. I need the space. You need to be able to sit down in the library. And you need a computer. Like exactly. These things are, you don't get because we filled up a, a giant room that should have been a computer lab or a seating area with a, a set of a terrible sitcom. So this is the Will and Grace set. Um, this is an area that should have been a computer lab or a, a study room. But uh, Emerson decided that it had to be famous, so uh, he put in this Will and Grace set, and uh, it's kind of pointless. So instead of being able to be used by the students for actual like work and making their lives easier, what it's doing is it's basically it comes down to the fundamentals and ideology of the college is let's link ourselves to Hollywood and make us this grandiose school and be like oh they have the Will and Grace set you know it makes kids want to come there. And, We'll get their tuition money, and then we'll send them through the system. What they tell you? What are you talking about? Talking about Emerson. Oh, what dude, they, this what fucking they... place sucks. <laughs> oh no, no, not about criticizing the system. I'm saying I sort of wish that before I got to this school, you know, I knew some of this stuff because, you know, the way everything's presented, you know, I feel like we've got the best equipment here, and we've got the best teachers, and we've got all of this access. But what you're saying is a different perspective that no one ever gives us. And sure, it's a business. The school is running a business and they need people to apply, but it's also people's lives, you know? It's a business involving people's lives. Throughout my interviews, I kept wondering, where does all this positive information about Emerson come from? Uh, how did you start working at the lab? Do you want to know my name first? Yeah, sorry, what's your name? I'm Jennifer Lee. I'm Jim. Hi. Um, how did I start working in the lab? Yeah. I spell that L-E-I-G-H, by the way, for your lower third. Okay. Um, I started working in the lab through a friend, um, and I met Peter Shivani, and I got a job through them. So I work on the eighth floor in the DPM. Do you feel that um, by working in the lab, you will, uh, you'll get a job after Definitely, yeah. You should get a lot of really great experiences. Um, working there. You get to work with other people and other people get to show you things. So the more skills you have, the more valuable that you are. So um, I definitely think that working in the labs will help my chances in getting a job after Emerson. Do you feel that, do you feel like, do you feel like somebody like Pete um, uh, kind of, uh, I guess, uh, tells you that by working in the lab that you will, you'll get a job? Um, he doesn't necessarily say those words. And I tend not to speak about him in interviews, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> I know everybody's sensitive about it. Like, yeah, I don't really talk about Pete in interviews, but... Okay. It's, it's not a bad question. I remember when I first came to Emerson and visited, and I was sat down in the classroom with six other kids or so, 
and um, a faculty member who will go unnamed basically said, if you know, if you don't come here and you don't do it this way and, and like be completely 100% involved in this and, and work, you're just going to be forgotten and you're going to waste your time and this and that. And I was like, you know, that's why when I first came here, I was like, oh, I, you know, this is what I got to do. Luckily, I realized that this is not necessarily the case. I think that that's wrong. I think that people should be like you or, you know, I can think of three or four other people at the school that succeed vastly beyond anybody that's actually working in the system. Um, but I think that Emerson, when you get here, when you go on tour, when you're talked to by anybody in the faculty, I think that they try and tell you that the only way or the best way to do it is to go through all these organizations. And it's just not true. You can do it your own way. Um, I just think there are so many students, I think that are juniors or maybe even seniors close to graduating and saying, wait, what have I really done here? Yeah, I did some paperwork, and yeah, I got some props for this film, and I was involved in that film, but what have I done? What have yeah. I personally done? After all of my interviews of Emerson students, I decided to visit some kids from the Massachusetts College of Arts. I heard from my friend Stefan that MassArt has a more perfect working equipment distribution center where anybody can rent out equipment regardless of classes or year, and I was able to talk to Juliana, who works there. I was so surprised to hear about you know, MassArt being this kind of uh, school where you can take out whatever equipment you want, kind of whenever you want, and it's so free. Like when I was talking to Stefan about it a couple weekends ago, he was like, yeah, I mean, I don't really have a problem with it at all. I'm shooting this movie, and like, I can just do it. Whereas that would be almost impossible at Emerson. Do you think that um, one of the reasons why you can only uh, check out what pertains to whatever class you're taking is because they are trying to make like it's about like professionalism and like concentrating on one idea. I think it's, I think, well they, they yeah. might say that, but I really think it's because we don't have enough equipment. Yeah. Why do you need yeah. a Bolex? Um, for my uh, cinematography class, I'm still shooting on a Bolex. We're not shooting like outside. We can't take out 16 millimeter cameras to shoot for cinematography. That sucks. Why haven't you been taught how to use like better 16 cameras for a cinematography class? Oh yeah, that's what's so curious, because we shoot on better 16 millimeter cameras for film too, and that's before cinematography. I don't understand why we're not allowed to shoot on better cameras or why we don't have enough cameras to take out. This is Paul Egaz. He's a friend of mine from freshman year and an Emerson graduate. He agreed to tell me about his college experience. It's <laughs> the best description I could have asked for. Um, I mean, it already costs a ridiculous amount of money. Don't you think that we should be able to have better equipment or, uh, or I guess, better, like a, a better feeling in, in going to college? Yeah, well, better equipment, um, sure. Better access to the equipment, maybe? I, I don't really get the sense Emerson is actually at the cutting edge of anything, which is, uh, yeah, I guess that would be their biggest deception, is that there's this kind of, uh, idea that it's, like, at the cutting edge of communication, and they're, like, pushing in the future, which is not a feeling I really got there, even though they had, like, really clean, sterile buildings and everything. Uh, it still seemed to be kind of archaic in its philosophy. Oh, I could I could just describe how easy it was to graduate from there and like how worthless. I yeah, did. yeah, yeah. From the from the mind of uh, academia, do you feel like you you really uh, learned more than you could at any other school? Because I feel like no, I learned far less than I could have at another institution, and I was in the honors program, which is supposed to be like a more intense curriculum. Yeah, I feel like uh, uh, he was he was our professor. Um, for media criticism and theory, and he made us cookies the last day of class, and he was so <laughs> yeah, he made us cookies. Yeah, I know he's great, and like I loved him, but a lot of kids in the class, including, didn't like him at all because he was like, oh, he's such a hard grader. Like, you know, I wrote this thing and he gave me a B minus on it. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna write him a terrible teacher evaluation. And he was so scared that he was not gonna get good teacher evaluations that he made us cookies, and he was like nice for the rest of the semester. Wow. Um, and and I feel like he kind of graded easier, even though he shouldn't have because of this fear. It's like a perfect system for Emerson College to be like, you know, if we scare the teachers, they'll be lenient on the students, and the students will get away, it'll be fine, and they won't tell anybody, but they'll just be idiots. And like, that's something that we have to, you know, think about. Yeah, Emerson seems to have no problem with having an unintelligent uh, general body. You know what else is great? These guys. I got the player. Did you see it downstairs? No, no, can we watch something? Yeah, what do you want to watch? You want to watch Muhammad Ali fight? After speaking to Paul and the mass art students, I realized that this idea that Emerson is the best was created by the school itself, and that the school cares more about its false fame than its own students. I was very disheartened. Um, of all of the interviews that I had, uh, 
almost every one of them asked me, uh, you're not scared to make a documentary like this? As if, uh, as if the administration or the Emerson Mafia might come after me and prevent me from getting a job in the future. And I would tell them, absolutely not. It's all fake or wildly exaggerated. I'm Jim Cummings. Thank you for watching. Did I sound like an asshole? Yeah.